Morning world. Welcome to Sunday the 13th of September. Uh, today is the Tyndale Archers last visit to the farm where they're going to be doing their what they call clout shooting um, which is unlike normal archery shooting at a boss 70, 80, 100 meters away it's actually shooting at a target up to 180 meters away and actually launching the arrow up so it comes down at a steeper angle clout shooting so uh, the top paddock where the sheep have their water tank um, is where they're going to park their cars so obviously the sheep can't stay in there uh, but because there's no water in here what I'm going to do is open up this hurdle which allows the sheep into the poultry paddock which they'll be quite happy to go in there because it means they can go rip into my hedges and some of the grass in there and they've also got access to water in there so that's job one is literally just open a hurdle. They've been in here before. They would probably recognize what's going on. Although because it was quite overgrown, I might have to show them maybe a bit or maybe not. Nope, they know where they're going. Biscuit is very bravely staying up there at the way because she's not very fond of sheep because they bully her. So through the ditch, up to the other side, I nearly fall down and they've got enough grass out there to keep them quite happy. They'll also crowd lift my fruit trees, which I don't mind. I don't mind my fruit trees being trimmed by the sheep because it keeps the crown up out of the way, makes it easy for me to cut the grass. Right, okay. They're happy and they'll be out of the way of the archers for long enough. Okay, so that's that bit sorted out. I'll go back through the hedge, hopefully not fall over it myself. We have got aspirations sometime. On the list of jobs to do is actually pipe this piece of um, ditch here and put a proper gate in here so we can utilize this properly. Uh, I learnt what was it? I think only a year or so back when I was talking to my father that we'd, you know, when we bought the golf course about maybe redoing the pipe in here. What I didn't know was the actual pipe that runs underneath this uh, driveway is cast iron. And its first job was a chimney for a steam engine. So, I don't know. <laughs> Would I ever dig it up? Probably not, because I'd be frightened of damaging the thing. But yeah, under there is the flue chimney pipe of an old steam engine. Well, it's worked for, well, God knows how many years. It's been there longer than I've been around on this planet. Right, okay. Come on then. So the archers are going to be shooting out over on that piece of grass over there. I ummed and add about should I cut it for them and make it nice and neat and short? Problem is, that there is a month's growth. It's September. If I cut that to make it neat for them for the day, I'm never going to get that back. And I, I want the grazing. So I'll have a chat with the guys, but hopefully this isn't too long for them to shoot arrows. If they were shooting at normal bosses, this would probably be too, too long. But as they're launching arrows up in the air and they're coming down at a fairly steep angle, I'm kind of hoping that this isn't gonna be a problem. They could find them. Right, okay. She's happy. We're very lucky to live here. Very. Come on. 
I just watched uh, young Tom Pemberton's new video introducing us to his new slurry tanker. That's an impressive piece of kit and fair play to him supporting British manufacturing and British business. We should all be doing more of that and you know consciously make the effort to do that. So hats off to you Tom. I actually think we've got this problem sorted now. Um, the septic tank on the farm was put in by my parents when they first moved here and lived in the log cabin that sat on that concrete slab. So this, this area here, this slab, believe it or not, was where myself, Julie and the four girls lived for the first 10 years of us staying here at the farm. This was the concrete pad for a wooden three bedroom log cabin. It was as big as planning would allow, um, but for the growing family and four daughters, it, it wasn't big enough. Problem was, we couldn't get plan permission to build that. It took us 10 years to get planning. Um, and the hoops we had to jump through. Problem is being only a 30 acre farm, very small farm, and proving viability and doing this and proving that we had burning hoops to jump through to get this. And yeah, we finally did it. We finally got this place, but the sewage system, which was put in, is a thousand litre tank, but it is not working properly. And I think that is down to female activity. How can I put that diplomatically? Anyway, there is apparently a giant fat ball in there that is held together with female waste products. I won't elaborate. You'll have to just use your imagination. And the Heron bone system that comes out, takes the um, excess water, which comes down underground here, and then goes off at about five heron bones across the field, is no longer working. Uh, year before last, you see the little green area with the posts up, we had an eruption, shall we say, of nasty black putrid horrible water coming up there. We dug a hole, we tried to find the problem, we tried to follow it back, and it wasn't curing. And then all of a sudden, it stopped. We thought, oh, brilliant. It's whatever the blockage words, it's gone, it's cured, job done. Only to find about a month later, we had a second black eruption. This time in the garden. So I don't know if you can see it, but the, the actual heron bone line comes right down and terminates there. And if you go back for some of the old videos, you'll notice that there was a big black horrible wet puddle there. So, uh, so we bit the bullet and we decided we're going to have to reinvest in um, the wastewater and sewage system here. Uh, the tank is ordered. Uh, we've ordered the big tank. I can't see the point of putting a little tiny thing in there and it is going to go in the orchard down there out the way um, and cure future waste whatever problems. I've just got to train the women in the house now to, you know, only only put the dishwasher on with a full load, not a half load, because every single dishwasher tablet is messing up the microbes in the tank, the washing powder, all that sort of stuff. So changing attitudes will be the second half of the job and not letting any fat go down the sink. That's another one. That'll help. Just as well Mrs P doesn't watch my videos much. So there you go. So in the next month or so, we're going to have some fairly major excavation works, digging up my garden, putting the tank down there. Um, you guys could follow along in the process of us installing a big wastewater septic system uh, that will replace the old septic tank, which was causing us problems. I mean, at the end of the day, I couldn't have that in the garden. Um, I've got grandchildren now, 
And the last thing I want to do is find my granddaughter out there puddling around in. No. No. So, yeah. So it's going to be expensive undertaking. But I think it's one of those things we'll bite the bullet, we'll do it, pay for it, move on, and just resave our pennies again. Okay, right. A cup of tea. I did promise myself a cup of tea. Well, we're back over to the farm and having a count up. Um, came in here and found a magpie on top of this fella. I thought he was diving into the bag, but actually, that's not a magpie, and that probably isn't either. Crows are the biggest problem. At home, it's rooks. Come on, so we're just gonna walk up to the top of the hill so I can have a count up. Um, I've already counted the bales from the other fields uh, with the drone, so I know what was out there, um, but I didn't know what we finished it with out here. A few, but we gotta work out the quickest way to get them in. I don't know how quick our contractor can move them, and I would kind of like them stacked up and covered over and protected sooner rather than later. Um, I might have to steal Matthew for the day or something. He won't mind. He's okay. Right. <coughs> it's a lovely day. It's supposed to get warm today. Uh, is it 24? Mrs. P said this morning it's supposed to get to today and 26 tomorrow. So plenty warm enough. You're puffing up by the looks of it. And that one is. Oh no, you're not too bad. A bit. That's the problem with moving the bales. Once they've puffed up and settled. Ideally, you want to make them, wrap them, and move them all in a few hours if you can. Because what happens is the bale will puff up with the gas inside, then it'll settle down. Um, and the last thing you want to do is, is squeezing them or poking them about then. But needs must. And I've been around here and seen some farmers have left bales out for week, even months. I was going to say weeks, but even months. Birds have been on there because there's footprints. I don't mind them standing on them. Just don't make holes. Right. One up there. So the neighbour's picked his up as well. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty. <sighs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifty-two. Okay, so, plenty, 52 out here, that's not too bad. But we need to, if we're gonna come through here with trailers with wrapped bales on, we don't really want that. Not making holes in my wrap, mm -mm. Biscuit. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Where's it gone? Come on in. <laughs> Come here. Come here. That's it, it's starting coughing now. 
Well, I'm assuming sometime in the next week or two, we're having um, seed dressers coming out to see us because our wheat is good enough to reseed. There's a second sowing, excuse me. Uh, a lot of the cultivation is kind of done. I'm half surprised Reg hasn't finished flat lifting over there, but then I suppose they're finishing off the barley. Uh, and I know Phil's flat out on the maize, or about to start flat out on the maize. So everybody's busy. It'll all get done. You can't see it. There's a buzzard sat out there watching me. Oh, there he goes. Either keep the rabbit population down, although the rabbit's here. They haven't got anywhere near as many rabbits here as we have at home. We are overrun with the things again. So there may be a future video coming up. I might actually introduce you guys to the Day State Huntsman. Um, I've got the 30 foot pound FAC Huntsman XL Regal, which is a beautiful air rifle and absolutely spot on for sorting out rabbits. So, anyway, I thought I'd just mention this old chestnut. Uh, he died eight, nine years ago, and we did a pollard on him. Um, it's deliberately, it's deliberately a rough pollard because we're actually wanting to introduce decay and um, and habitat for our little wildlife beasties. So, uh, hopefully, it stays standing a bit longer. What's been in there then? Okay, so a bit big for a pigeon. Hmm, what could you be? Could you be something that goes to its to woo? Hmm. So, I can't see in there, but anything in there? Yeah? No? I'll find out later on when I do the edit. So there are lots of cavities and holes and spaces in this tree. It's completely out the way. Uh, even if it falls down, it would maybe just about reach the road. But I think we're just going to let this guy just decay and collapse in his own time. So just a bit of habitat. So shelter for something, food for something else. Home to cut many. Well, I just thought I'd call and have a look at the wheat first, see how we're getting on. I wanted to know what our temperature was at. Uh, What's that? That's crop is 19.1. Air temperature 20.5. So, which is strange because I just got in my van and my van said air temperature was um, 18. So why would it say air temperature in here? Oh, I suppose it's in it's a different different environment. It's measuring the temperature there, I suppose. But the crop, apparently. Hmm. It's getting hotter as we speak. Hmm. So the probe for that is that's that one. I hope they've got these plugged in the right way round. Because that doesn't ring true to me. I might just have to ask the Sparky to double check that because I reckon that's air temperature and that's the crop temperature. I think it's the wrong way around. Maybe. So, worst case scenario, the crop is still at 20 degrees C, which is warm. We want that cooler than that. Um, but we haven't had many cool days, one or two cool days. And we've only had the full electrics and automatic system on for a week up until then. It was all run off the generator and that was obviously completely manual. Um, and we were just having to 
make the best guess. I just put dirt on my nose. I have. Oh well. Um, the door people have been back and resealed the door. So this seal here had shrunk back and there was plenty of room for Mr. Mouse to come in. Uh, we don't want Mr. Mouse in here. So um, they came back and they've actually restretched the rubber foot and they pot riveted it on the ends so that, well, I don't know. I reckon to determine Mr. Mouse to still get in there. What do you reckon? I reckon they stretch that end first and that end second. Right, okay. Anyhow, I came, I saw, I will turn the lights off because I came in here, the lights were on. There's a dog. There you are. Okay, and lock her in. Okay. Now we're going to see your parents. long afternoon. Uh, we've made the decision to go over and pick up as many of the bells as we can from a tether farm and stack what we can and flatten out the area we're going to stack them on and and everything else that goes with it. So, anyway, luckily for me, young Matthew is happy to come and lend me a hand as soon as he's finished lunch at his grandmother's. Oh, well, give me a head start. Well, we're here. Um, we've just trimmed around the gateway so when Matthew comes in, he can see where the gate posts are because that is a long trailer. So now I need to do the same this gateway up here. Then get the skid steer off, level out the ground behind. I think there's a roller to move as well. So I don't know if I could do that with a skid steer or if I'll have to wait until Matthew gets here and do it with the tractor. I guess we'll find out. Right, well, some of this I can do with that. And some of it is gonna need the big boy. Sucky big boy. There aren't many things that's going to argue with that. This is so much easier to carry around in the truck than a chainsaw. Right. Not gonna reach that one anyway, so that will do. Right. He can go back away again.
unfortunately we missed the beginning of that when all this was a big bramble bush um, we're having a lot of manure I believe of some sort delivered before long so we need this area of the hard standing for wagons to come in and turn around so it was requested that if I could clear it that I put my bells on the left hand side here so hopefully I've got enough room for 100 bells because I can come out to about here uh, and I haven't got to go that high um, too high would be enough but yeah so we're going to stack our bales from Itchington this year in the bramble bush well it, it was a bramble bush hopefully they won't be there long um, I'm expecting by Christmas or January at the latest they'll all be gone so anyway I found the roller I knew he was in there somewhere he's full of concrete so I could move it with a skid steer but I think it's kind of out the way enough right bucket off elephant nose on I got less than a quarter of battery on there so you see me load bells before haven't you yeah well it's been hot and sticky well I've been waiting for Matt to get here I've been taking bells in individually off the field but as you can imagine with the skid steer that's a long slow job but good news you probably can't see him but he's just arrived he's just squeezing through that gateway it is only a 12 foot gate anyway now now we can crack on with it you can have the tape and the knife job you can have the tape and the knife job. Yeah. Crows have had a few of them. Yeah. Oh, you don't need mine then? No. Alright, there you go. Um, what's it like wood for that gateway there? So I can unload them in the field. Yeah. So if you want to just go up in the, I'll load them on, um, probably put a 10 or 14 on there, yeah. bring one up with me, it won't take us long to clear this. No. So, uh, right, lovely, let's crack on. Shout if I spot one with damage.
bloody crows. Try to stab it with a knife in a minute. Yeah, don't stab it with a knife. I'll have to call your names if you stab it with a knife. The other thing is when you're cutting it, instead of cutting it straight down, if you hold the tape up yeah, and, and cut it sideways, you're less likely to stab the bag. That's the that's kind of the idea. Now make sure the corners are all stuck down because as soon as if the weather gets underneath it, the bloody lifts it off. Yeah, go on there, right? 